good morning children very good morning happy saturday morning weekend morning good morning guys good morning please join the class everyone good morning molting in cockroach okay molting in cockroach yeah theek hai aquino aquino what aquino here beta molting in cockroach good morning any doubt you have you can ask me yeah so you are asking 13 molting total number of moltings are 13 and total number of heart chambers are also 13 total number of moltings are 13 and total number of chambers in the heart are also 13 okay sir but that is we are just playing quiz game quiz game among yourselves okay ye chatting aapas mein kar sakte hain kya between them quiz game among yourself actually we don't allow that there have been some incidents in the past okay so yeah testing okay fine see <clears throat> there is a one bad fish which can spoil the broth everything one bad fish writing any comment about the girls and all okay posting some type of uh, prohibited pictures and all that have happened we don't know uh, our student or who is someone has our id and they are with us okay so dear children we have done the morphology of frog please remind me did we complete the morphology of frog Yeah, no, no, nothing like that. Okay, we were thirteen. See, I am telling you, out of hundred ninety nine are good students. Oh, one or two start something, or maybe they are not our student. They have come just to create nuisance. Last year, so lot of such thing happens. Okay, <clears throat> we did not complete the morphology of frog. Please confirm, beta. Please confirm. no okay a uh, cockroach i pendi cockroach i should start with okay 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 let me start with frog this is a representative vertebrate frog belongs to the phylum and uh, we need to know the sub phylum sub phylum okay we need to know the class and the genus and the species so genus and species of whom of indian bull frog so we are learning about the indian bull frog indian bull frog which phylum it is come on guys phylum phylum which phylum it is in short you can write phylum about frog yes only one person answer rohita answered phylum is yes chordata phylum is chordata sub phylum anyone know the sub phylum name sub phylum now many people have answered phylum good sub phylum sub phylum amphibia vertebrata so yes beta sub phylum is vert vertebrata vertebrata good they are also called craniata vertebrata okay also called craniata now craniata generally they don't ask you but it is my way of reminding you that those who have a vertebral column they also have a cranium to protect the brain now class class is yes we you know the class genus is yes indian bull frog rana and the tiger like spot so tigerina <laughs> rana tigerina and the amphibia amphibia they are the first one who came on land they are the first one who came on land they evolve from uh, coelacanth coelacanth are the animals who can uh, they are actually fish 
but they can go on the land and they can walk on land like uh, any uh, you know any tetrapoda can walk on land on four limbs their limbs are uh, they don't have limbs they have uh, their uh, low you know fins are like lobes lobe like fins so on those fins they can walk they can walk again they can go back to water we suppose that the early amphibians evolved from those type of guys coelacanth coelacanth okay dear children the body of rana tigrina is divisible into head and trunk head and trunk the body is divisible into head and trunk there is no neck and there is no tail so neck is absent and tail is absent now absence of neck help in their motility okay so it help it help in swimming movement in swimming and next thing they help in number 2 they help in their leaping movement leaping so first you take the swimming movement and also the leaping you know leaping leaping jumping is jumping at one point jumping if you jump a long jump this is a leap okay so leaping it help in their leaping or even jumping their motility their movements absence of neck help in that the trunk can be divided into i mean trunk has two parts anteriorly it is thorax which is hard thorax okay which is hard and hard because there is uh, ribs are there and posteriorly soft abdomen so if you hold the frog from the rear just in front of the thigh you can feel the softness okay so posteriorly the soft abdomen abdomen okay this is the thing then you see the color on the dorsal surface the color is uh, olive green so on the dorsal surface olive green in color olive green and on the ventral surface ventral surface the color can be pale yellow pale yellow olive green and pale yellow on this olive green a uh, dark irregular black spots can be seen irregular black spots hence they resemble the tiger skin and hence the name tigrina tigrina black spots are there on the dorsal surface dorsal color is olive green olive green color and ventral color is pale yellow color pale yellow and uh, dark spots are there dark spots but black spots are there on the dorsal surface but so i think you understood till here all basic basic i, I am re recalling basic basic and trying to uh, say to you and then if particular precise one then i'll go to the textbook to tell you the precise one but so then what else what do you see here uh, in the head region you will see bulging eyes so eyes are bulging out they are bulging out bulging out eyes are bulging out okay and uh, what you see that eye has got uh, eyelids okay so eyelids are there eyes have eyelids there are three eyelids so upper eyelid upper and lower and the third eyelid the third eyelid is called nictitating 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 membrane nictitating membrane the third eyelid is called nictitating membrane upper eyelid upper eyelid is there lower eyelid is there and nictitating membrane is there see the word nicti and tating this is a third eyelid third eyelid okay this third eyelid protect the animal okay so protect the eyes of the animal it protect the eyes in water when this animal in water when this animal is in water the eyes are protected by the third eyelid which are little uh, hard okay so they the they protect the eyes when this animal is in water 
So this animal is actually covering the eyes by nictitating membrane when it is in water. Okay. So third eyelid is covering them. Even we have a remnant of nictitating membrane. We have a remain of that or remnant, remnant in our eyes. Remnant in our eyes. You know that our eyes have got a remnant of nictitating membrane. If you see our eyes, okay, so you see this is a cornea, okay, and this is the eyelids. Now, on the medial aspect of the eye, on the medial aspect here, you see a pink membrane, a pink fleshy membrane is here. Did you see that? Pink fleshy membrane. You can look, look into the eyes or anyone else's eyes if they allow you. This is a pink membrane and this is the plica semilunaris or nictitating membrane. This is the plica semilunaris, semilunaris. This is the plica semilunaris or the nictitating, nictitating membrane. It is a remnant of the third eyelid. Okay. This is the medial side. This is medial side. Here, the lateral side, and here we find this fleshy, fleshy thing, which is the nictitating membrane. Do you, do you understand that what I am referring to? Which pink thing, triangular thing I am referring to? Semilunar, semilunar in outline. I am referring to. Did you? Okay. Sound is low. Sorry. Have you understood what I am referring to? Understood? If not, then we can proceed further. We can, okay, you understood, okay? So even we have a, yes, we have a remain of the nictitating membrane. We have a remain of the nictitating membrane. And this is a third eyelid remain we have, but frog has got working third eyelid and it helps the frog when it is in water. So that's a head region. Then we have a, a long U-shaped mouth and above the mouth, one pair of nostrils can be seen. So above the mouth, one pair of nostrils, okay? So nostrils are also there. Nostrils, external nostrils, how many? One pair, one pair. Where are they? They can be seen above the mouth above the mouth, they can be seen above the mouth, one pair of external, external nostrils, external nostrils, done, okay, then external, external nostrils, after that in the head region, just behind the eyes, behind the eyes, we have a membrane called tympanum, tympanum, this is the eardrum. This is the eardrum. Eardrum. And this represents the ear. Okay. So this represents ear. External ear, I mean. This represents the ear. Okay. What this line means? It means that suppose if someone asks, where is the ear? We say this is the ear. What we are referring to? Only pinna. It has nothing to do. Even if it is not there, it won't be harmed much. Okay, it is only collecting the sound waves. But why we are why we are hearing? Because of the internal and middle ear, right? So, but we say ear, nose, like that, okay? So, in terms of that, this represents the tympanum, which is a round or oval type of uh, shiny surface behind the eyes that represents the ear. In these animals, they don't have tympanum. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry. They don't have pinna or external ear. They don't have pinna or external ear. But so we started with the uh, Indian bullfrog. Indian bullfrog, we have started with the morphology first. Okay, Indian bullfrog, we find it in uh, ponds, ditches. It is found in the pond. It is found in the pond, in the ditches, in the ditches, in the lakes. In the lakes, you can find them in the pools. They can be seen in the pools, okay? That means this is a fresh water 
it lives in fresh water environment it lives in fresh water environment and uh, this is uh, this belong to phylum chordata sub phylum vertebrata class amphibia genus rana and species trigrina okay they belong to tetrapoda group tetrapoda means they have got two pairs of legs so they are, they belong to tetrapoda tetrapoda they have two pairs of legs two pairs of legs are there tetrapoda okay this much you know about them it's a fresh water animal and uh, the skin is very soft we'll come to that then uh, i started with the body parts the body is divisible into head and trunk trunk anteriorly is thorax which is hard and posteriorly is soft abdomen neck is absent and tail is also absent it is said that the absence of neck help in its swift movement swimming movement and leaping movement the dorsal surface you find the, it is dark green or olive green in color and the ventral surface is pale yellow in color we can easily make out the dorsal and ventral surfaces by the color and of course the way this animal is sitting on the dorsal surface we find some black spots irregular black spots are there and this gives it a appearance of the tiger skin and hence the name tigrina we started the eyes in the head region eyes are bulging out yes they have a bulging out, out eye, eyes with eyelids eyelids are present i don't know why student think eyelids are absent why they give a wrong answer eyelids are absent in fact they have got three eyelids how many eyelids are there total three eyelids total three eyelids are present they have upper lower as well as the third eyelid present the third eyelid protect the eyes when this animal is in water then above the uh, mouth we we see a mouth a long u shaped mouth above the mouth we have a pair of nostrils or external nostrils to be more precise tympanum is uh, behind the eyes tympanum is there it represents the ear okay tympanum represents the ear well all these things we see in the head region then i came to the trunk part in the trunk part as a one more thing i should have done that is the skin the skin of this animal is very soft it is soft and slippery soft and slippery the skin is soft and slippery so the amount of collagen is very very poor in the skin and therefore therefore we cannot make cannot turn the skin turn the skin turn the skin into into leather leather therefore we cannot make leather out of the skin of the frog skin is very soft and uh, without uh, even the scales are not present soft and slippery scales are not present scales are absent in the skin and skin is suited it is suitable it is suitable for two task number one for cutaneous respiration this is suitable for cutaneous respiration number one number two this is suitable for absorption of water absorption absorption of water yes is this look weird no it is not weird it is true that this animal can absorb water through the skin in fact it can never drink water okay so it never never drinks water it never drinks water this never drinks water it just take uh, absorb the water through the skin only the skin is also suitable as it is slippery uh, they can it can easily uh, run away from the predators okay so it is difficult for the predator to hold them because it is very slippery okay so <clears throat> predators cannot easily catch them catch them because of the very uh, slippery soft and slippery skin scales are absent on the skin the skin is suitable for cutaneous respiration absorption of water and also the predators cannot easily catch them because of the skin that that's how the skin is suitable to them okay now after that uh, you can think of 
there are mucus glands all over the skin which can make it further moist and moisture help the skin so remember that cutaneous respiration moisture beta moisture help the skin in cutaneous respiration if it is not moist if it is dry then the skin cannot be used for uh, cutaneous respiration dear children after that let me take you to the limbs region the locomotion for locomotion it has got limbs limbs okay how many two pairs of limbs are there what do we call them we can call them four limbs beta we can call them four limbs and we can call them hind limbs hind limbs i will again post the uh, you know uh, the pdf which is made from the pptx file of the frog and the name of the file is frog for neat by av okay so you can uh, i have already shared it but for the newcomers i will share it again today four limbs and hind limbs so one pair of four limbs one pair and one pair of hind limbs are there one pair of hind limbs are there okay now which one is bigger obviously hind limbs are larger they are larger and more muscular and more muscular they are larger and muscular as compared to the four limbs the so four limbs are they are not that large as compared to the hind limbs very important thing is the four limb end in four digits okay so here the palm palm ends in four digits four digits the palm end in four digits and the hind limb here we can say the foot end in end in five toes here the foot end in five toes five digits or five toes the toes of the foot the fingers of the foot or the digits of the foot can be called toes so five toes hind five front is four four in front five in rear four in front and five in rear four limb and hind limb four limb and hind limb please understand please remember that four limb one pair hind limb one pair and uh, four limb has four digits okay so four limb ends in four digits four limbs end in four digits i'll make it okay so it is end ending in four digits this is how the four limbs are the four limb the four digits in the four limb and uh, this is the first digit you can see this one it's a first digit and uh, this usually have a very uh, thick base of the first one this is the first second third and fourth now the first one is very unusual like this so there is a pad can be seen here and there is a pad here pad okay and this is called copulatory pad okay this pad is called copulatory pad copulatory pad copulatory pad this is only present in males present in male frogs only male frogs only present in male frog only copulatory pads are there these are and also they they become very sticky in breeding season it become very sticky okay so it can become it can become very sticky 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 during during breeding season during breeding breeding season during breeding season during breeding season it can become very sticky and thick this is called a uh, copulatory pad and this help in identifying the male from a female so only male have this type of digit male have the first digit and the base of the first is having so much of swelling and this is a normal for them this is helping in holding the female 
in their copulation. However, the copulation is a different type of copulation. Normally, we have taught that copulation means when the male gametes are they enter into the female, how the male gamete make the gam, uh, male make the uh, gametes enter into the female body, which helps in which happens in copulation. Here it is not so. No, none of the gametes are entering into anyone's body. Both are releasing the gametes in water only. But still, to release that also, they require some hormonal change. And for that, copulation occurs. The copulation is called sexual embrace or amplexus. We will come to that. Also remember that the hind limbs, okay? So the hind limbs, if I show you the hind limbs, the hind limbs have one modification and that is it and in the there there are uh, <coughs> yeah, there are there is webbing webbing of the hind limb you can see the webbing here webbing so it has got webbed toes webbing of the toes okay webbing of the toes webbing of the toes Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five. Webbing of the toes. This is a hind hind limb. Hind limb is pentadectyle. Hind limb is pentadectyle. Penta means five. Dectyle means fingers. Having five fingers or five digits or five toes. Dear children, hope you understand till this much. Okay, so this is one of the basis of sexual dimorphism one of the basis of sexual dimorphism do you know that any other base also in case of frog any other way of sexual dimorphism can we think of any other way yes what we can find in the male frog in the male frog something can be found male frog one thing we found is the uh, number one it is the copulatory pad one thing we found is copulatory pad this is only happening, this is only present in the males, dear children. Another thing that is present in the males is uh, vocal sacs. So one pair of vocal sacs are there, vocal sacs. How many? One pair are there. Where they are present? They are present below the, they can be seen below the mouth, okay? Below the mouth, below the mouth. These can be seen bulged out, okay? These can be seen bulged out. They are bulged out, bulged out. And what do they do? They help in sound amplification. They help in amplification, amplification of sound, of sound, amplification of sound. And the sound produced by frog, do you know what is the name given to the sound produced by the frog? Okay, ING, okay, ING, I am putting ING at the back and C in front. What shall I write in between them? What is the special sound produced by the male frog? Male frog, in order to call the female, in order to call the female. Bacho. Croaking, very good, that is called croaking. Okay, croaking, C R O A. K I N G croaking. K I N G. There is a croa and there is a king. Croaking, croaking. And croaking uh, can be heard from male. So only males can croak. Only males can croak. Croaking. And but Joe, please remember that uh, this is their mating call. Croaking is their mating call. It is just to uh, allure the female so that the female can uh, turn on and can come to the male, okay? So this is croaking, it's a mating call. But so just learn like that. Vocal sex are there. These are the two bases of sexual dimorphism. They are the basis of sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism. Dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism. One more thing you should know at the rear end, okay? So where, where the two thighs are meeting, so where the two thighs are meeting 
at that point there is a small aperture there there is a small rundram there you know what is that rundram is at that where the two thighs are meeting at that point there is a small hole and what is that small hole called come on the small hole just uh, where, where the two thighs are meeting at the back at that place a small rundram is there tell me the name of that rundram it is called cloacal aperture very good that is called cloacal cloacal aperture cloacal aperture cloacal opening or cloacal aperture but so from the cloaca what comes out from the cloaca comes out number 1 from the cloaca comes out is fecal matter feces comes out urine comes out urine and also the gametes come out gametes okay gametes gametes and they ova and sperms ova and sperms okay from this aperture only ova and sperms this is cloacal aperture cloacal aperture they don't have anus they don't have urethral meatus they don't have any such separate opening neither for the gametes also but they have a single opening a common opening called cloacal aperture but so that is all about the morphology that is coming to my mind when i am thinking about the frog well let us go to the textbook and see what all textbook has to offer to us okay <clears throat> one thing one should already know about this is this thing everyone has to really focus on this point a very important point written on the very first page and here the point goes i want everyone to read it that this is just a part of a chapter it is not a full chapter even it is a part of the chapter so we are only supposed to prepare it from the uh, neat point of view and uh, even we have already passed the uh, ip examination so even it is not required there so only that much is enough okay we are there here to need and not to do phd on this now phylum sub phylum class order anyone who can tell me the order of frog order anyone who can think of the order i am giving the hint order includes a name saying that they don't have tail order has a name includes the name saying that they don't have tail Yes, you are right. It is anura. Order is anura. An ura. Ura means tail. An means absent. Tail is absent. Anura. Tail is absent. Anura. Okay. After that, class is we know amphibian genus and species. Rana tigrina. Already we know about that. the next thing is habitat rana tigrina is most widely distributed in northern india and pond lake pool ditches all fresh water and come on land to hunt for prey yes it is a carnivorous animal it is carnivorous and it hunt for the insects it eat the insects okay but their larva beta please note down that the larva is not carnivorous larva is herbivorous larva is herbivorous by by nature it is herbivorous by nature and uh, they are carnivorous because they can eat the insects okay so far all points are clear so adults are herbivorous uh, adults are carnivorous tadpoles are herbivorous locomotion is with the help of uh, two pair of uh, limbs are there muscular limbs are there okay feeding their carnivorous tadpole larva is herbivorous croaking two vocal sacs in male frog it's a mating call and yes they are poikilothermous they can, they are not uh, ready to they are not they cannot uh, regulate their body temperature so their body temperature becomes equal to the external temperature that is the reason when outside it is too cold or too hot they cannot sustain because the internal temperature also becomes too hot or too cold 
that is the reason it can go into uh, the stage of suspension it can go into the stage of suspension you know suspension suspension A stage of suspension like hibernation estivation hibernation in winters when the temperature is very cold and estivation in summers okay okay so it goes into hibernation or estivation this is a suspension suspension which is how these animals can uh, avoid the unfavorable conditions protective coloration can be seen yes they are they are shown they show variety of uh, matching of the color with the surrounding and this is known as camouflage or mimicry where the animal can match with the surrounding animal can match with the surrounding either deliberately or naturally also if the animal is matching in the surrounding this is called camouflage and this is one of the types of mimicry it is a mimicry okay like you have mimicry people imitate like they take they make the voice of amitabh bachchan they say they do mimicry of amitabh bachchan or famous artist okay so <clears throat> mimicry means that they are doing it artificially it is not a natural one mimicry mimicry can be for offense and defense remember that the protective coloration is also for both offense and defense for attacking also and to hide them when they have to really pick up the insects they hide them and quickly jump over them and not only jumping they just throw their tongue out and the bifid base of the tongue hold the insect and bring it back to the mouth the frog can never drinks water but absorb it through the skin breeding there is a amplexary pad or nuptial pad also called copulatory pad copulatory pad in the first digit fertilization is external tadpole larva development is there is a tadpole larva found development is indirect okay and tadpole respiration anyone who can think of how the tadpole respire tadpole respiration it occurs it occurs through through gills red pole respiration occurs through gills through gills remember that it is just like fishes just like fishes do with gills it also does with gill now this is a picture that uh, i wanted to open and tell you the upper eyelid the nictitating membrane which is third eyelid external nostrils can be seen above the nose then there is a tympanum tympanum which represents the ear and the digits ex and uh, you know anterior or the fore limb fore limb has four fore limb has four hind limb has five and in hind limb also there is webbing of the toes in hind limb there is a webbing of the toes webbing webbing of toes webbing of toes <clears throat> dear children please learn that and here you can see here you can see the vocal sac vocal sac when this animal is croaking at that time the vocal sac become bigger and they just go down and then we can see them okay so dear children hope you have taken a production of the diagram very quickly again upper eyelid nictitating membrane external nostril tympanum digits 4 in the front and 5 in the rear and also the webbed toes in the rear in the rear Uh, leg and also the cloacal aperture at the base of the thighs the sur the dorsal surface of frog can you please tell me the external morphology dorsal surface of frog is olive green in color and ventral surface is pale yellow in color this protective coloration is helping animal to uh, you know hide itself and that is helpful in both offense and defense offense and defense body division two main divisions are there head and trunk one is head and one is trunk head mouth dors there is a mouth dorsal external nares are there two dorsal lateral eyes are there obliquely placed pigmented circular tympanum obliquely placed circular tympanum is there 
eyes are covered by nictitating membrane which protect these eyes in water <clears throat> okay nictitating membrane which protect these eyes in water okay after that trunk trunk is differentiated into hard anterior also called thorax and posterior also called abdomen <clears throat> a pair of fore and hind limbs okay so a fore the fore limb are shorter and stouter stouter means thicker they are short and stout stout means thick and stouter means thicker and end in how many five digits <coughs> okay much larger and muscular much larger and muscular than the four limbs and end in five digits absence of neck is helpful in locomotion and swimming okay locomotion and swimming The sexual dimorphism in the males, you can see this vocal sac and also the copulatory pad, the nuptial pad. Nuptial means wedding, nuptial. Nuptial pad or copulatory pad and vocal sacs, it helps in distinguishing female and male. The male frog possesses vocal sac and nuptial pad during the breeding season. Uh, <clears throat> an amplexary pad or copulatory pad okay. a copulatory copulatory pad is developed on <coughs> first finger first finger of the forelimb first finger of forelimb copulatory pad <clears throat> the male frog possess number one vocal sex and copulatory pad the male frog possesses vocal sex and copulatory pad copulatory pad can be seen at the base of the first digit in case of frog okay <clears throat> Dear children, that's all from my side. Uh, that's all from the morphology side. Now you tell me, uh, shall we start with the uh, anatomy now? I mean the systems, digestive, circulatory, like that. Or uh, you have doubts that you will ask or shall I ask my doubts to you? You can please tell me. Today, a uh, chance is given to you. I'll ask you doubts, okay? One student thing asking, Oppo is saying asking anyone else supporting that quiz. Okay, quiz. Wonderful. Let's play a quiz. Here we don't have a quiz, so let's see.
let's do question number 73 guys i am enlarging it to you okay so we'll do quickly so that we can do as many questions as we can question number 73 a ring of 6 to 8 blind tubules that are present at the junction of forecut and midcut in cockroach is known as okay in cockroach is known as 6 to 8 blind tubules yes please they are called a hepatic ck very good they are also called gastric ck answer is c okay answer is c because better we can also call them gastric ck the midgut of cockroach contain what is there in the midgut nothing is there in the midgut please understand so i'll just change the question as the hind gut okay i'll change the question as hind gut hind gut now tell me the answer the hind gut of cockroach contains tell me the answer guys answer is d answer is fourth or d good hemolymph of cockroach consist of okay number 1 plasma number 2 hemocyte number 3 both a and b and number d is none of these answer is both a and b allergy muscles are found in well allergy muscles are found in frog hookworm earthworm cockroach come on allergy muscle where have you read about them allergy muscles in frog in cockroach in earthworm and in hookworm or another option is all of these come on you are saying allergy muscles in cockroach wonderful answer is cockroach how many pairs of sparicle is present on the surface of cockroach okay how many pairs of uh, sparicles bachcho how many pair 10 pairs good 10 pairs 78 in cockroach the following organ help in excretion so excretion uh, this is accessory excretory organs bachcho these are accessory excretory organs and there is a fun of it okay so there is a fun of it let's learn that so the, these are fat bodies uricose glands nephrocytes nephrocytes uricose glands fat bodies okay this is the answer the answer is all of these accessory accessory uh, excretory organs how many ganglia lies in thorax and in abdomen of cockroach okay so how many are they a b c d who will answer a b c d ganglia wala question ka answer answer is a very good now this is a this is b this is c this is d that will be my answer okay correct answer is a if the head of cockroach is cut off it will live for as long as one week mosaic vision means mosaic vision means it is made up of small small patches the complete vision is made up of small small patches and there is quite overlapping of the patches because of superposition and that's and because of that the resolution is very poor correct answer is a more sensitivity and less resolution a pair of testes in cockroach lies in a pair of testes in cockroach lies in 2 to 4 4 to 6 2 to 4 2 to 6 4 to 6 correct answer is 4 to 6 4 to 6 external genitalia in cockroach is represented by external genitalia in cockroach is represented by gonapophyses male gonapophyses not the female because female gonapophyses are not external male gonapophyses and they are also called phallomeres male gonapophyses or phallomeres they are same thing to bachcha answer will be d both a and b if ovaries in cockroach is made uh, each ovary in cockroach is made up of how many answer is c okay 85 match the column pair of sperma thiki now pair of sperm yes remember that this is in pair sperm thiki is in pair okay and the pair of sperm thiki kahan par hoga ye uh, ye hoga 2 2 6 nahi ye sixth segment mein hoga sixth segment okay sperm thiki sixth segment ovary ovary 2 to 6 segment ovary mushroom glands 6 and 7 mushroom glands anal cerci d anal cerci d means they are 10 segment so pair of spermatheca this is not given in the textbook but picture it there is a picture of it and please learn it it is 6 to 7 
please uh, sorry it is only six in this only the main pair is there okay this is there okay this is this is in the sixth one okay but now next is uh, uh, this one okay this is match the column how many uthika is produced in female cockroach how many uthika yes this is again a numerical one and correct answer is uh, a correct answer is a 9 to 10 the nymph of cockroach is grown by molting for how many times okay for how many times molting occurs it occurs 13 times in the nymph 13 times molting occurs okay 88 which one of the following is incorrect statement about cockroach they are pests because they destroy food and contaminate it with their smelly excreta all species have economic importance but uh, none of the species are economically important then in fact they can be detrimental to the economy so none of them are uh, development in periplaneta americana is porometabolus correct next to last nympha stage has wing pads and that is correct which one of the following is a correct statement about cockroach anal style is present only in the male cockroach it is correct Anal cerci are present only in the female cockroach. That is wrong. Each eye consists of about 1,000 hexagonal omatidia. That is wrong because 2,000 of them. Each uthiki contains 12 to 14 eggs. Okay. And this is also wrong. 14 to 16 eggs. Anal cerci are present only in female wrong Anal style is present only in the male cockroach. A is correct. Correct answer is A. Very good. 89 ka correct answer is A. 90, 90th. Okay. So this is A to C we have to label. And A stands for fat globule. Fat globule. Fat storage area. Then the B can be a nucleus. And C can be plasma membrane. Fat storage area, nucleus and plasma membrane. Bacho 91, identify A to D. Okay, A stand for fibroblast. B stand for mast cell. C stand for collagen. D stand for macrophage. Macrophage. Okay, A to D, identify it. A to D. D stand for macrophage. B stand for, B stand for mast cell. Mast cell. Okay, bacho. Okay. Can we do this question? Identify A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, so let me just uh, start A, B, C, D like that. A stand for A stand for which nephridia? Which nephridia? I can see in the mirror which nephridia. Yes, they are uh, pharyngeal nephridia. Pharyngeal nephridia, 4, 5, and 6 segment. Okay, B stand for, B stand for the duct of pharyngeal nephridia. The duct of pharyngeal nephridia. Then this is a... D. Blood glands. D can be blood glands. Also, we have to see from the option A is given the uh, nephri nephridia or D is given the nephridia. Okay, so let, uh, let me just check it. And of course, we'll do first all of them. And what you see here is the nephridiopore, nephridiopore, and these are the septal nephridia, septal nephridia, pharyngeal nephridia, nephridiopore and septal nephridia okay guys so let me take you to the options and here go here goes the option okay so we can say a for blood glands b for duct of pharyngeal nephridia c for septal nephridia d for pharyngeal nephridia e for buccal cavity <clears throat> okay e for buccal cavity say a and f for integumentary nephridia F for integumentary nephridia. Correct. 
correct their left radio ports are going to outside okay guys this one is correct the first one is correct please check the answer first one is correct blood glands so a is shown the blood glands and d is shown the uh, integumentary uh, sorry pharyngeal nephridia b for duct of pharyngeal e for buccal cavity f for integumentary nephridia integumentary nephridia they are integumentary nephridia but so i hope this is clear and f is showing the uh, you know in the f is showing integumentary nephridia and c is showing the septal nephridia a b c in the given diagram a is the anterior aorta b is don't know and c is the heart chamber b is alary muscle and c is the heart chamber a is anterior aorta b is the uh, chamber of the b is this <coughs> alary muscle and c is the chamber of the heart correct answer is d but so let us uh, can you identify this picture can you can i expect you although we have not done in the class can you identify this picture bachcho hmm what is a here a if not then you can tell me then i will help you out this is again the reproductive system in the male frog the male reproductive and the urinary system combined both of them are combined yes please can i help you out a what is a stand for a stand for vasa efferentia very good a stand for vasa efferentia okay let me write here vasa and efferentia efferentia vasa efferentia a okay then uh, b stand for b is the cloacal aperture b is the cloacal cloacal aperture cloacal aperture c <clears throat> C is here is the kidney. C is kidney here, okay. And uh, C D D D is the oviduct. D is the oviduct. We don't call them ovisac. We simply call them. Sorry. sorry. Urino urino genital. urinogenital duct urinogenital duct because in them the ureter and the urine and the genital duct combined therefore urinogenital duct and e for the fat bodies fat bodies e for the fat bodies bachcho i hope Uh, we have done few questions and uh, answers are not here but later on answers have been given Can you do sixty fourth question? Sixty fourth. Who will do sixty fourth, guys? Sixty fourth. A. You are saying A. Correct answer is A. Yes, it is one fourth up to three inches. One fourth of an inch to three inches. Which one is correct about cockroach? Generally brown and black color, pest and vector for several disease found in damp places and all of these. Zoological name of cockroach is Periplaneta americana, Ferretima posthuma. This is the uh, earthworm. Earthworm. Okay. 
and rana tigrina is indian bull frog indian bull frog in each segment the exoskeleton has hardened plate in cockroach known as scleroids scleroids body of cockroach is segmented and divisible into three distinct regions known as uh, head thorax and abdomen head thorax and abdomen the head of cockroach is found formed by fusion of how many segments six segments fused to form the head capsule the cockroach has which type of mouth part cockroach has biting and chewing type of mouth parts how many filamentous malpigian tubules are found in cockroach how many filamentous malpigian tubules 100 to 150 total the ring of 68 blind tubules that are present at the junction of foregut and midgut in cockroach is known as c both hepatic cecca and gastric cecca answer is c the midgut of cockroach contains now there is none of them so all here we have to make hindgut of cockroach then all hemolymph i think we have done that we have done this question and uh, we have also done this question now let me make you do this question which is the uh, what is the importance of organized nervous system uh, organized organ system optimum efficiency of cells coordinated activity of cells yes both of the above both of these is the uh, importance obviously heart contains which one of the following kind of tissues heart conta heart contains all of the following type of tissues what is discernible trend remember that evolutionary trend is a discernible trend we can think of we can make out uh, the you know ideas from the evolutionary trend it is discernible it has it help us to discern what do you call the study of form of or externally visible features that is called uh, morphology 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 what do you call the study of and of morphology of internal organs in the animal internal organs anatomy morphology of internal organs internal morphology Inter <laughs> anatomy anatomy because anatomy means to cut when we cut the animal then we can see the whatever we can do we can study the outside or or maybe inside further cutting but it is anatomy earthworm can be traced by fecal deposits what are they called they are called worm castings which of the following type are indian earthworm the indian earthworm is ferretima ferretima okay tell me ferretima lambricus or both ferretima and lambricus a b or d which answer is correct which answer is correct here ferretima or both ferretima and lambricus answer is d both ferretima and lambricus very good cockroach is omnivorous nocturnal cursorial all of these cockroach is omnivorous and frogs are omnivorous nocturnal cursorial all of these frog is omnivorous nocturnal <coughs> cursorial and herbivorous frogs omnivorous nocturnal cursorial and herbivorous come on tell me frog is also frog is also nahi uh, nahi maine frog mein kya bola omnivorous nocturnal uh, cursorial and uh, you can take it as carnivorous carnivorous the frogs can be kept in carnivorous which one is correct about cockroach generally brown and black color Okay, found in damp places, pest and vector of several diseases, and found in damp. Okay, already we have done this question, and now I'll take you to the next page, and let us see how many questions we can trace. Which, when muscle cells receive stimulus, they get shortened. Obviously, contraction of the muscle is shortening of the muscle. Muscular movements are intended to. number 1 move the body to adjust to changes in environment maintain the position of various body parts answer is c both a and b muscular movements or muscular contractions are required are intended to maintain the position 
of various body parts okay which of the following is a typical skeletal muscle biceps triceps both a and b yes both are bicep and tricep are typical i don't know in what regard they are saying it typical okay the sheet enclosing the several bundles of muscle fiber is known as several bundles of muscle fiber is known as fascia fascia which of the following is a fusiform muscle okay cardiac muscle no smooth muscle yes and uh, skeletal muscle no answer is uh, b smooth muscles okay somehow you have to do smooth muscles fusiform okay smooth muscles are held together by connective tissue cell junction epithelial tissue none of these Well, uh, that's all from my side today and we'll share this assignment to you and uh, well guys, uh, we'll meet on the next turn. We'll discuss more about the uh, frog and uh, I think next to next turn, we'll be completing the frog to start with the human physiology. Okay, but before that, the frog has to be done. Many systems of frog are same as that of the man and uh, uh, I joined yesterday to the class, is there any possible to do the previous chapters and also we have to get the study material okay Geetika, Geetika, beta. Geetika, you know someone who is uh, uh, somehow you have taken the admission with who with whose uh, you know like uh, contact you can please contact that person that person will contact the office and uh, they will issue the study material to you meanwhile the you know uh, the soft copy okay so that is there in, in our mobile phone, in our uh, uh, laptop, and that we are sharing. At least, rather than to wait till the hard prints are given to them, it is usually taking time. So time means two to three days, maximum two days. Therefore, I am sharing it. So one day before, when I make them, finalize them, I share them in the group. Okay. So that can be done, but that is only uh, the geology one and the geology assignment or maybe some geology notes are there. But uh, for others, all the subject, you please contact our office. Okay. All the best, guys. God bless you. Bye-bye. Take care.